This is a video review of the children's picture book, The Karate Kid, for the National Writing for Children Center. And this book has just come out to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the book of the movie, The Karate Kid. So uh, if you're a parent of a young child, you're probably of that age where you remember the movie, The, the Karate Kid, or even if you're a grandparent, because I remember it when it came out. So you'll see a lot of the same things here in the book that were in the movie. Here's the cover. I like the colors of this this um, this book, the blues and the kind of uh, orangey reds. Also something that I look for in, in picture books when I think they're really well produced and that is they have a jacket cover to protect it. But when you take off the cover, the cover of the book itself is also the cover. Sometimes you'll see a picture book where it has a really nice colorful cover with the pictures, but then when you take off the jacket cover, it's just blank. It's just a plain color. And let's face it, most of the time the, the dust covers get torn up or lost or whatever over time, particularly if it's a, if you're book is your, fa your child's favorite book, so you really want to have this colorful cover on the front. The other thing I like is colorful end papers, and I think these are nice. It gives this, this scene of the um, bonsai trees that Mr. Miyagi, the person in the story, does. And then there are other things to look at just to see the, the mop that sort of looks like someone's hair, just different things you can look at there. And again, I like the color palette. It's kind of like sort of dead because the, the story is sort of taking place in the desert. And then when we go into the first part of the story, again, these sage greens and that kind of thing. So it definitely has a palette. So the story starts out where Daniel and his mother move to California, and they're excited to live by the ocean, but Daniel is nervous about being the new kid. And right there, I think that sets it up so that kids can identify with this because every child has had some kind of opportunity or some kind of situation where he's the new kid and it's you know a little nerve-wracking so in this case this is what's happening to Daniel and then on his first day of school some mean kids start picking on him the leader of the group was named Johnny and so we see these group of kids another thing I like about this picture book and many picture books is when they have double page spreads like this because it's so nice for kids to to look at the story if a teacher's uh, reading the book to the child and reading it to a classroom of children and the kids in the back even can see the the pictures because you know double page spreads it makes it a lot bigger I also like the fact that the text is kind of minimal sometimes I think books tend to overdo it in text with picture books and so it's usually a child's favorite book when there's less text and more pictures then it says the mean, the mean kids study karate at a dojo named Cobra Kai and dojo may be something different for children. They may never have heard that word. Most young kids won't. So I like the way that it gives a class a clarification of terms here or a definition where it says the dojo is a place where students learn martial, martial arts. All the students at Cobra Kai were training for a big karate tournament. And he's kind of symbolically and both uh, literally here on the outside looking in at all the kids because he's different from them. He's the new kid He's not in the karate group and he's looking in to see what they're doing. So the next day, the Cobra Kai students chase Daniel home from school. And then we see them kind of cornering here. They've all got their jackets on. Again, colorful text, large enough pictures that children in the back of the room can see what's going on. Minimal text, there isn't even any text on this page. I kind of like that too, because with picture books, a really good picture book is a marriage or integration of text and pictures. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a man appeared, and he chased the boys away with his karate moves. So he jumps over the fence, he's doing all these neat kind of things, and it was Mr. Miyagi, the Japanese maintenance man who worked in Daniel's apartment building. He was better at karate than the Cobra Kai students. And if you look back through the text again, you'll notice that when they drove up to their new apartment building, Mr. Miyagi was here. 
see here he is outside doing the um, sweeping up for the place. So it's kind of neat because with picture books, kids tend to want them read over and over. And it's always nice if you can pick up on things maybe the second time you're going back. So if we're reading this book to a kid, a class of kids, or even just your own child bedtime, for the second time, they'll go, oh, look, it's Mr. Miyagi the second time. So that's kind of cool. Uh, one thing here, you in picture books, you might think that Mr. Miyagi is sort of saving the day for Daniel, and you usually want the child to be the one who saves the day for himself. So while Mr. Miyagi does save Daniel in this particular situation, when we get further in the text, <clears throat> Daniel says to Mr. Miyagi, Please tell me, te teach me karate, Daniel said to Mr. Miyagi. I want to enter the tournament. If I can beat Johnny, I bet he'll stop picking on me. So Daniel is the one who's responsible for solving his own problem of how to get Johnny to quit picking on him. He just needs Mr. Miyagi's help. So that day, again, clarification of terms, that day Mr. Miyagi became Daniel's sensei. Sensei is a Japanese word for teacher. So it just gives us these definitions sprinkled through the text when the reader might need them. And then we see what Mr. Miyagi has Daniel do when he's actually teaching him about karate, but Daniel doesn't know that because part of the part of karate is it's a mental thing and it's teaching you to be patient and disciplined. So I thought it was interesting here. Daniel goes through three things here, which is the core of three, a good structure in picture books, where he is being patient and he's being very disciplined, even though he's thinking, gosh, there's no time for karate training at the end of the night because he doesn't realize he's been training for that. Again, the same thing the next day. He goes through three things, core of three, um, which he thinks are not helping him with karate, but then later through the text he learns that they actually are. So it's a nice um, kind of you know, picture book based on the movie, even though it's really condensed. You don't see a lot of the stuff in the movie. But I think it could be of great use in a classroom where kids watch the movie and then sort of compare and contrast the movie to the book, see what's going on there. Um, just talk a little bit about how did the, the different themes, you know, come through in the book of um, patience, self-reliance, friendship, all these kind of things. The one thing I will say that surprised me a little bit in this book, it's, it's a little bit of a criticism, um, and that is usually you want a, a picture book to end with an unexpected but totally logical twist, and I felt this one could have ended with a little bit more of a twist but it does end um, you know, on a good note and has a great message to kids. So I would highly recommend this book. It's just a nice book to have on hand, uh, especially as a companion piece to the movie, The Karate Kid. So that is my review.